Hi and welcome back. Today our topic is mobile and embedded devices security. Uh, now since it's also a very important topic, uh, we'll try to understand the mobile device security by covering the fundamental aspects of different type of devices such as tablets, smartphones and wearable devices etc. And that's our first slide where we are talking about some of the devices that we use quite often and every day. So uh, security of these devices is equally important just like any other systems on our network. So if you'll talk about tablets, these are the portable devices that combine the features of smartphones and laptops, offering touch screens and mobile apps suitable for both entertainment and productive tasks. You might have seen people using tablets even for um, their official purposes as well as for entertainment for kids, etc. It's a touch screen. Mobile operating systems are there. Often uh, they use the cellular networks or the Wi-Fi connectivity, etc. An example could be an iPad, which is used for video conferencing or browsing the internet, or maybe reading eBooks, etc. Then we have smartphones. They are highly capable uh, mobile phones, which uh, serve as the primary means of managing the personal and professional communications. Web browsing and application uses, uh, uh, it's equipped with the operating system and capable of running standalone applications, etc. So cellular connectivity, for example, operating systems of iOS or Android, they have uh, high resolution touchscreen cameras and applications, etc. An example could be um, any smartphone that handles the calls, emails, social media, photography, and maybe the GPS navigation, uh, where we can use the smartphone devices even to search for maps and uh, uh, they can be used in cars in order to guide us. Now, wearable devices are the electronic devices worn on the body, often with the smart capabilities for tracking health metrics, such as the heart rate, step count, and providing notifications. So um, before we were only relying on the smartphones, but since now we have all these wearable devices, um, uh, we can use smartwatches, fitness trackers, body mounted sensors typically synced with the smartphone. So whatever is there on your mobile phone, you can check it on these wearable devices as well. Apple Watch tracking, daily physical activity provide notifications from the connected iPhone, etc. Then we have mobile device or the mobile device connectivity methods. We have cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and USB. So these are the major communication methods that we have. Now, if you talk about the cellular, it's a communication technology that uses radio frequencies to send and receive the data and voice transmission, etc. Um, you might have seen cell towers, mobile phones and the SIM cards and the data plans, etc., which are the components of it. And on your mobile phone, you use maybe the 4G or 5G technologies in order to access the Internet. Now, we have Wi-Fi as well, which is a wireless network technology that uses radio waves to provide high speed Internet connectivity. Um, it components are uh, wireless uh, routers, maybe the access points or the virus enabled devices. Um, we can connect different tablets or home hold devices, etc. on the Wi-Fi networks for streaming videos or in order to use smart TVs, etc. Now, Bluetooth is also used. That's a short range wireless technology standard that connects the devices over the short distances without requiring internet connectivity. So if you need to connect to them, you need uh, Bluetooth adapters, paired devices. We are using headphones, smartphones, and even our car entertainment system is connected through Bluetooth. USB connections are there. They are the standard type of communications used for computers and mobile devices for data transfer and charging, etc. You'll find the ports for that in cars as well, uh, whereas the charging smartphones and USB cables are connected to the computer as well. Now for the enterprise mobile deployment methods, we have bring your own device concept, corporate owned personal uh, personally enabled devices, then choose your own device, virtual desktop infrastructure, which we call as VDI and corporate owned devices. So let's try to understand them one by one. Bring your own device is a policy allowing the employees to use their personal devices for work related tasks, blending personal and business use of a single device. So they allow that you can bring in your own device and you can use it for official purposes. Um, there could be the components of it as personal devices, security policies and MDM should be there where they'll be controlling the mobile devices. So in your organization, if you are using any 
um, application or a system which manages all the devices which are connected to the network it makes sure that all the devices are constantly updated and they have the latest patches on it before they can connect to the corporate network example could be an employee uses the personal smartphone for accessing the company email or the documents etc then we have corporate owned personally enabled devices devices purchased and owned by the company but allowed for the personal use of the employees offering balance between control and flexibility so these are the devices which would be purchased and given to the employees by the companies and they are allowed to use it for their personal usage as well now these are corporate devices for the personal usage and permission with the endpoint security so organizations have certain level of control on those devices and the company provides smartphones to the employees such as they can use for personal calls and etc so if in case the mobile gets missing or anything the organization can remotely wipe out or delete the device or data on those devices choose your own device that's another concept which is a policy where the employees choose from a list of approved devices that then provided by the employer combining personal choice and the corporate security so they might have a set of products for example if you prefer a tablet or a mobile phone just like it goes like if you want to get a desktop computer or a laptop so they would give you an offer to choose the device for example the device lifts or the corporate provisioning the it support and employees select their preferred model from the list of smartphones and tablets etc which are provided by the employer then we have virtual desktop infrastructure a deployment method where the desktop environment are hosted on a central server and delivered over the network to the endpoint devices now these central servers virtually are the virtual machines and the remote access software's employees access their desktop infrastructure through the tablets or the thin client terminals regardless of the location so if for example we want to set it up in our organization and um, we want to use thin clients for that there would be the central installation and everything which would take place on the central servers and on the remote clients which we call as the thin clients they'll be just the players of those operating systems so if for example we need to um, have a lab and uh, in the morning we want to have courses where they are teaching server operating systems on that whereas in the evening if they want to teach linux operating system it can be easily deployed by a click of a button where the remote devices would load um, operating systems which are loaded on the central server then we have corporate owned devices that are fully purchased owned and controlled by the organization typically equipped with the business application restriction from the personal use so uh, the organizations would have full control on those devices the first site of softwares and application shall be installed on that uh, strict usage policies comprehensive device management etc are there the companies used laptops and configured pre-installed business applications and secure access controls are there so once a laptop or a desktop com uh, computer which is issued to you by organization it would come in with the pre-activated windows and uh, microsoft suite of products and plus any other applications that they have purchased and they are using it so it's just uh, ready to go once you'll just enter your username and password um, you'll find most of the applications that you use um, they'll be pre-installed on those devices then we are talking about mobile device risk and vulnerabilities there are different risks which are associated with these devices like teeth ring um, the practice of using the mobile device like the cellular data and the internet access point for all the devices to so the mobile device with the data plan is connected and the other devices would use the internet which is being available on your host device now employee connect their laptop to the internet through their smartphone cellular data at a public cafe or for example if you have a huge data plan and you're traveling somewhere you can enable the tethering on your mobile devices so that everyone else in your car can connect to your mobile device and can enjoy internet then usb on the go otg it's the standard that enables the mobile devices to act as a host for usb peripherals otg enabled devices and usb devices like the flash drives etc transferring the files on the usb drives onto a smartphone for example or potentially introducing a malware if a flash drive is compromised etc these are the examples of usb on the go then we have malicious usb cable usb cables that have been modified 
to include hidden hardware intercepting the data or interjecting the malware etc these are the modified usb data cables they are built for some purposes like if um, you think that it's a cable available over there and it's for charging but it's not for charging it is actually someone can copy the data from your mobile device etc that's why people avoid using these cables and the charging ports at the airports because you never know that the kind of cables which are installed over there maybe they are the malicious usb cables which are used for those purposes then they have hotspots uh, wireless access points provides the publicly or privately allowing the devices to connect to the internet often lock uh, lack the robust security measures like public wi-fi networks or the minimum security if you will find any networks where anyone can connect without having any authorization on that so Example could be if you are connecting to a free Wi-Fi hotspot in the airport or the attackers can perform man in the middle attacks, etc. to capture the data. So if in case you want to use the internet which is provided at the public places like the shopping malls or at the airports, it's always recommended to use VPN on your devices so that at least the communication that is taking place on your mobile devices is encrypted. Then we have mobile devices risks and vulnerabilities like jailbreaking, routing, and side loading. Now jailbreaking and routing, these, these kind of things are usually uh, not allowed by law in most of the countries. So you might have heard of jailbreaking. It's a process of removing the software restrictions imposed by the iOS or the Apple operating systems. Um, the same kind of thing if you do on an Android device, it's called routing. It's gaining access to Android devices to removing the carrier or the manufacturer limitations on it. Now, the, for jailbreaking, the components could be modification of the operating system. And whereas on the Android phones, it's the root access uh, tools, etc., which are there. Now, they are not allowed, first of all, because it would void the warranty of it. Second thing is that if you'll jailbreak or root a device, you'll be able to, um, uh, you'll be able to flash custom ROMs on those devices. It means that uh, you can load another operating system other than the operating system which came in loaded with that device. The other problem is that there are lots of rogue applications or maybe the hacking applications that you can install on these devices. So using your mobile phones, you'll be able to capture the packets on the network in a promiscuous mode, or maybe you'll be able to crack the Wi-Fi passwords, etc. That's why jailbreaking and routing is not recommended on these devices. Plus, if you want to use any banking applications on the devices which are routed or jailbreak, most of the times these financial institutions would detect that the device on which the application is installed is either rooted or jailbroken so they would not allow you to run the applications you'll see a message on the screen that since the device is jailbroken or rooted um, those applications will not work on those devices now side loading is also installing apps on a mobile device from sources other than the official app store just like the um, pirated softwares for computers there are pirated applications which are side loaded apk files for android installation from unknown sources downloading and installing these apps from the third party websites um, may contain malwares and they can compromise your data on those devices now we have protecting mobile devices and that we have segmentation containerization mobile device management mobile application management mobile content management and unified endpoint management let's try to understand it one by one segmentation is the practice of dividing a network into separate segments to control access to reduce the risk of lateral movement so in a network environment we'll divide the network into divisions maybe uh, uh, different components of it could be firewalls or uh, virtual lands now when we'll create separate network segments for guest users and internal employees it would limit the access to the sensitive information further if in case your network network is compromised and you have segmented the network so for example if a area of accounting section is compromised rest of the departments like payroll HR and others would be would not be affected due to um, effective implementation of segmentation of your network 
Then we have containerization, it's isolation of applications and their data from another application on the same device to enhance the security. So that's, uh, that is usually there for the mobile application development, etc. Or if we are checking any applications, we use containerization for that, like application containers, data encryption, sandboxes, environments, etc., where each application would run in a standalone mode from the other applications. Now example could be using containerization to separate the personal and corporate data on employees smartphones. Then we have mobile device management softwares that allows the IT administrator to control, secure and enforce the policies on smartphone, tablets and other endpoints. So device tracking, remote wipe, policy enforcement and all those things is possible uh, through mobile device management. Now implementing the MDM to remote wipe um, data from a lost corporate tablet may prevent the data leakage since whenever the user would connect the device to the internet remotely uh, through mobile device management they'll be able to wipe out the remote devices then we have mobile application management which focuses on managing the applications on the devices rather than the devices themselves like they would have granular control on the applications which can be loaded on your device or not. Um, these are application specific applica um, policies uh, like licensing apps only or the licensed apps to the organization can be only installed to those devices. And uh, it is also used for app deployment and restrictions could be there. Um, now if you're using um, MAM or, or to only allow installations, which is mobile application management to only allow the application of the company approved apps on the devices, only those applications would work on it. Rest of the applications, if you want to install it, you'll have to contact the IT department and they'll make the necessary um, measures in order to install those things on your mobile devices. Then we have mobile content management. Uh, these are the tools and strategies to secure the access and sharing the corporate content. So um, we need to make sure that any sort of organizational secrets or the uh, confidential information shall not be leaked from these devices to so content policies, secure content storage and control sharing capabilities are there, which make sure that no data leaks from these devices implementing MCM um, is to ensure the corporate documents can only be accessed by the authorized users and by using some specific applications so no one else will be able to access those things. Unified endpoint management system is a holistic approach of securing and controlling the desktop, laptops, smartphones, tablets under a single management uh, console. That's why we call it a unified endpoint management because it's a single solution which is controlling almost all endpoints on your network. Device management, application management and content management is also part of it. Now, if you're using UEM to manage all secure enterprise devices with consistent policies across all platforms, it becomes really easy for you to keep track of the devices and the application plus the licensing, etc., cetera, um, which is due for certain applications. Now we have embedded systems and specialized devices. You might have heard of Raspberry Pi. It's a small affordable computer. They can be used for programming various electronic projects, etc. It would have a CPU, uh, GPIO pins, USB ports, HDMI output, etc. So there are lots of things for which you can use Raspberry Pi and uh, it's used for uh, do your um, do yourself uh, projects for home automation etc controlling the light sensors or even even making it into a smart app to be used on smart tvs etc now then we have industrial control systems these are the systems which are used to control the industrial processes such as manufacturing products or handling power generation etc they usually have sensors actuators plcs program programmable logic controllers or human machine interfaces now these are used for managing the automation and assembly lines in a car manufacturing plant then we have SCADA systems which are the supervisory control and data acquisition systems these systems architecture is that they use computers and network data for communication for high level processes and supervision management you'll find controllers network data communication and graphical user interfaces on it now they are used for monitoring and controlling the municipal water supply system or including the water flow and treatment processes and if you look at the industries uh, it is used to keep an eye on the gauges their pressures and if anything requires attention to these systems 
in the end we have uh, internet of things it's a network of interconnected devices that can um, collect and exchange data using the embedded sensors uh, smart devices sensors and internet connectivities would be there in smart home systems we use iot devices to adjust the heating and lighting systems uh, for the occupancy and user preferences, etc. So if you have IoT and enabled devices and you're going home, so before you'll reach home, you can enable all the devices like turning on aircon in your apartment, turning on the lights and all those things can be controlled through your mobile device. Then we have application security considerations um, that we'll have to consider. Uh, first of all, we have application development lifecycle. It has certain levels and um, different stages of it. It's a framework that outlines the stages involved in the creation and development of software application. It is a generic lifecycle, including the stages and planning, analysis, design, implementation, and maintenance, etc. So that if we are following it, we know that we need to follow these um, stages in order to have a secure application development. Then we have in the application security considerations different models like waterfall, agile, and uh, security development operations. Now, waterfall model is a linear sequential approach to software development where each state cascades into the next with no overlap used in the projects where um, the requirements are well defined and unlikely to change such as the government software projects, etc. Then we have Agile model is it's a flexible and interactive approach to software development that emphasizes incremental delivery and collaboration. It is adapted by startup technologies companies and rapidly developed softwares which continuously give feedback and iterations etc. In the end we have uh, security DevOps. Uh, now an integration of security practices within the DevOps practice aiming to embed security in every part of the development lifecycle. So if we are implementing it at every step, we make sure that all the potential weaknesses on the application are being handled properly, implementing automation, security checks and balance in the CI or CD pipelines to ensure that the security is considered at every step. And now we are talking about code testing for secure coding techniques and static code analysis, dynamic code analysis, and fuzzing. So code testing is very important because it's a process of systematically checking the code to ensure that it performs as expected and free from defects or vulnerabilities. So before you'll make your applications live, you'll test your applications so that they don't have these sort of vulnerabilities in it. Performing unit testing to validate each function in an application for expected behavior, making sure that it's not consuming a lot of memory, it is performing as it was intended and all those things. Then we have two things in it one is static code analysis and the other is dynamic code analysis if we look at static code analysis it's the examination of the source code before it run uh, to identify potential security vulnerabilities um, errors on non-compliant and code segments uh, we use the tools like sonar cube or uh, to analyze the code base for the security vulnerabilities uh, without executing the code itself. So it would literally go through the code, find the vulnerabilities or any things which could be improved or which could be exploited later before the application goes on the production servers. Dynamic code analysis is a process of analyzing the behavior of a program while it is running. So the static code is just analyzing the code. Dynamic code is when we analyze it, if the application is running and find the bugs that are not detectable by the static analysis. Now using to tools like Wellgrun to monitor the program execution to identify the memory leaks or buffer flows, etc. It helps us in understanding that how many, how much resources are being utilized by these applications so that we can make the necessary adjustments in order to make our application secure. Lastly, we have fuzzing. It's an automated software testing technique that involves uh, um, uh, that involves feeding uh, random data like the first data to the application to discover the security vulnerabilities. For example, we'll, uh, we'll be using American Fuzzy Loop AFL to stress test the media player by throwing corrupt media files and uh, to find that how it handles unexpected inputs. Same thing is that we would load the application with lots of garbage data and see that how it performs to those things. So that was our lecture on mobile and embedded devices security.